this one I have printed the background using, um, I did an orange overlay to start with and then I printed it using my uh, beautiful, I absolutely love using corrugated paper and I just, you know, painted it, printed it, printed it. So I've got this really quite nice background going on. It's corn, kind of looks a bit like it's on fire. Um, but I thought it was quite autumnal looking. And then I've just done some very simple uh, seed head shapes there, um, which I'm not so keen on. It's very flat. I quite like this line going across there because I did another, I did another piece of corrugated paper just to add a bit of interest to that sort of foreground area. It's all part of the game, it's all part of the playing, just experimenting and seeing what comes out of it. So what I've got here is my is my nice silver pen again. And I was thinking, well, what I'm going to do is just try and do a bit of, as though I'm stitching on top of it, and just giving a bit of highlight as though I was using another colour, and just see what happens. Um, the background, there's nothing on the other side, so there's nothing to stop me actually stitching into this one. But... I just kind of fancy playing around with it like this. I'm not quite sure where everything went now, actually. It's a bit random. And this is the thing is, uh, you know, nothing's very precise. And sometimes with seed heads, they're quite messed up. They're not all precise and regimented. Sometimes there's bits missing. And sometimes things have just been blown around in the wind. One of the things I love with these um, umbles, umbles, carrot family, cow parsley, whatever you call them. I really love the lines on the stems. So I think there might be another one going up there. So I'll pop that one in there. And I'm going to just top, and I'm top stitching these a little bit. I might not do them completely. I might just leave them a little bit, just to give them a hint of something going on behind also quite splodgy how I painted this it's not it's not great but I'm just seeing if I can work into it a little bit and create something that's um, a little bit more to my liking and again it's it's a nice therapeutic sort of process you know you can put your music on or get your radio on and you can just be saying well I'm going to work into these see where it takes me and all the time it's sort of feeding my creativity, getting my creative juices going. And I quite like this one because it kind of looked like it just appeared from nowhere. It just kind of came out of the grasses like that. So, so again, it's, you know, it's not fantastic. It's not a great piece of art. It's just me having a messing about time playing. So I quite like that. Okay. So I'm happier with that now. I feel as though there's a lot more going on in it, and I could see that how that could translate into stitch with a perhaps an embellished background with lots of different colours going on in it, and maybe a bit of texture. So I'm going to turn it over now though, because I've got I need to colour in the other side. It's no good leaving it like that. That's no good at all. So if I find my little one of my little trays. And I think we'll put a bit of colour onto here. I think we're going to do a bit of... I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to put a bit of yellow. I don't know why. Ooh! It's rather a lot of yellow, actually. Let's just get a bit of yellow onto there. Mm -hmm. A bit more water onto that. I'm going to do two. I think yellow's just quite a nice autumn colour. And I'm just going to swap that onto there like that. And what I'd really like is to find myself, I'm just going to get myself a piece of <laughs> So what I need to put onto there is I've got myself another blank sheet. I'm hoping it's still going to be wet enough to make a imprint. And if it's not, well I'll add some more water. Let's just see what that does. Well, that's quite nice. I quite like that. And I'll just add a bit more, a bit of wet onto that. I'm just going to use some clean water on there. I've got one. This pot's got like what I'd call dirty water on, but it can be quite useful if you want a bit of colour. It's kind of got orangey-browny 
mix. It's still got quite a lot of paint in it, so I can use that, or I can use a clean, a clean water. And again, I think I quite fancy. I think we'll do that again. See what we'll get off it this time. And what you can do is you could take something like that. Oops, that's going to make a bit of a mark on there, but never mind. Um, you could do something like that. Let's see what that does. Not a lot actually, because I've got such a lot of paint and it's quite wet. So what else could I do? I tell you what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, just put that on top of here and see what that does with anything. Now it's doing a little bit. This is the inside of a, a Tetra pack, okay? And if you cut it open, a Tetra pack, you get this really nice surface inside which is kind of shiny because it's plasticky basically so it's a tetra pack type thing actually i should say it's a tetra pack type thing so although that's not fantastic that is a technique you could use again um or you can you could paint directly onto here this also works quite nicely you can put it directly onto there Ooh. The problem is sometimes the ideas for what you want to do come quicker than you can actually do them. There you go, so that's creating a nice thing on there. And it's almost like once I've got once I've got some paint out like that, I really want to use it up. So it pays to have a stack of your pages cut out ready. So I think we'll do another yellowy one. I'm just going to put a bit more clean water into that. Oops, just move that over a little bit. And because I think what I'm going to do is overprint these. Mm -hmm. With and oh wrong one. Put that in the clean water. I'm going to overprint these with some different colour. It's funny how the colours just changed today. I feel like using some yellow. And that's a fact. Um, what you could do, I'm just going to experiment with this. This has gone all dry and crusty. It may do something, it may not. And it's doing a little bit, it's lifting a little bit of paint off, but not a lot. Um, the other thing you could do is take something like a crayon and you could do some do some marks into it. No, I don't think that's doing anything very exciting. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Wrong paint, wrong paint. Let's put a bit more, a bit more washer onto that. I don't really like that, so I'm just going to paint over it. What I might do is take my piece of corrugated paper. This may be too late now. I may have too many layers of paint on here. It may do absolutely nothing for the price of fish. I don't know. That's sort of. It's sort of making it a bit more linear, a little bit more. So I think what we'll do with that one is we'll just put that over there to dry. I'm going to come back to this one because what I really want to do is a bit of orange. Uh, let's get myself a new one of these. Uh, I've got a whole stack of these over here. So I get my little margarine lids, and I'm going to find. Aha, this is what I'm after. So this is a piece of polystyrene stuff, not very nice. It's sort of um, the sort of stuff you get in meat tray packaging. And I thought I would just have a little, I've had a little play with it on some of the pages, but I thought it might quite work quite nicely with this because I've got a nice light background. So what I've done is I have scored into it with a sharp ended instrument like a biro or that kind of thing and then you can paint it up put it on and you create this nice textural mark going across there which I do like you can put that on again if you wish you could put another color onto here we could put a bit of sometimes what I do with these is I get a water soluble crayon and a bit of water, a bit of water on there, like that. And then you can add 
some other colours and you can do some really nice shading actually with the water soluble crayons. Now, if we pull that back off you see we've now got really nice different layers of orange and red and you've still got nice yellow coming through as well. I just really love using this. I have to say, I think this has got lots of applications along with using the uh, corrugated cardboard, which I think again has got lots of applications. Um, I did a bit of corrugation on this piece here and just moved it along. Just, you know, even if you just paint a strip along the middle. And this one, I think I used a mix of corrugated and the piece of polystyrene. And you could even do, oh there you go that this one's got drawings on it now but uh, again I used the corrugated to create the background of that one and I know I did a piece where I've used the corrugated that way and that way so that you get a sort of a checky background so it's really very useful it's very versatile and it's quite fun to do because you never quite know how it's going to work so I think that's probably enough on the um, the kind of making front and what I'm going to do next is I think I'm going to collect all my bits and pieces up together, all my pages that I've made. I've done some stitching into some of them, I've done some drawing into some of them, and I'll try and put them all together and show you that as a coherent whole. It's been a really good fun thing to do, and I've got, you know, there's more I can do. This, this stuff is just quite addictive once you start playing with the paint and the paper, and especially if you add stitching as well, I find that just really adds into the mix. So I'm going to put these into my sketchbook next and then we'll take it from there and I'll be able to show you a close-up of what I've done.